Hello again. Today we're going to continue talking about writing simple assembly for the x86-64 instruction set architecture. In part one, we discussed registers, the move instruction, and addressing modes. Now we'll discuss basic arithmetic and logic operations. Part three will cover conditional and control flow instructions. Our discussion today aims to continue your orientation toward understanding and writing assembly source code for the x86-64 ISA. Recall that a program is a sequence of machine instructions and data created by compiling high-level source and assembling assembly language source into object code that is linked to create the program. The format of machine instructions is defined by the ISA, which provides a one-to-one -one mapping to readable assembly instructions. This includes the op codes and the operands. So a given line of assembly corresponds to exactly one machine instruction and vice versa. Remember that these are the 16 general purpose registers of the x86-64 architecture. The mnemonic used for a register depends on whether the instruction should use the entire quad word of 8 bytes, a double word of 4 bytes, or even a word or byte. Remember that x86 is a fairly involved process for generating an effective address that supports several possible addressing modes, ranging from absolute addressing with just an immediate value to the scaled indexed plus displacement addressing. Although addressing modes are primarily used for memory operands, there is an instruction called load effective address with the mnemonic LEAQ that calculates a quad word effective address without making a memory access. This instruction can be useful to generate an address that will be used repeatedly so that the processor does not have to redo the address calculation multiple times. It is also used to reduce the number of instructions or simply to avoid using a multiplication instruction for simple arithmetic involving a scalar multiplication by small powers of two and addition. For example, the simple C function returns 12 times its input argument. In assembly, this can be implemented by using LEAQ to first multiply the input argument by three, since RDI plus RDI times two is RDI times three. Then the shift arithmetic left on the intermediate value by 2 is equivalent to a multiplication by 4 because shifting left by n is equivalent to multiplying by 2 to the n. Let's take a look at some of the most commonly used arithmetic logic operations. We'll look at these with two operands. Some of these can also be specified in a three operand format that specifies two sources and a destination and some have a one operand variant that uses an implied register. The two operand format is commonly used, however, so just like grade school, we'll start there with addition. The add queue instruction calculates the quad word value of the destination plus the source and puts the result in the destination. So the dest operand is used as both an input and an output of this instruction. We'll see this is the same in all the two operand arithmetic instructions. The dest operand is one of the general purpose registers. The source can be an immediate register or memory operand. Next we have sub q, which is basically like add q, but it does subtraction instead. Note that it subtracts the source from the destination. Since subtraction is non-commutative, the order matters. The imol q does a multiplication with truncation of any overflow. overflow. SALQ is shift arithmetic left, which we mentioned already. It sh bit shifts the destination left by the number of spaces specified by the source, filling with zeros from the right. Likewise, shift arithmetic right does a right shift of dest by the number of bits specified in the source, but it fills in from the left with whatever value the most significant bit has. So if the most significant bit is one, the shift will fill in ones, the same for zeros. Filling in the most significant bit preserves the value of the destination when interpreted as a two's complement integer. If you didn't know that, you might want to review two's complement arithmetic. The last shift instruction is shift right logical, which shifts the destination to the right by source bits and always fills with zeros. The XOR queue instruction does bitwise exclusive OR of the destination and source. This means each bit of destination is XORed with the bit in the same location in source 
and gets written back to the destination. The AND queue does bitwise AND, and the OR queue does bitwise inclusive OR. Here are some of the more common one operand instructions you'll encounter. The INCQ instruction stands for increment, and it just adds one to its operand, which must be one of the general purpose registers. Similarly, DECQ decrements its operand by one. The NEGQ instruction does an arithmetic negation of its operand, that is, it writes the negative value of DEST into DEST. The NOTQ instruction writes the bitwise complement of DEST into DEST. In other words, each one of DEST becomes zero and each zero becomes one. The book and online sources can provide the details of many more instructions. Let's put some of these instructions into context with an example. Here's a function that takes three 64-bit integer arguments, x, y, and z. It then calculates several arithmetic expressions, eventually returning the quantity x plus y plus z times the quantity x plus 4 plus the quantity y times 48. Here is one way to generate assembly for this function. We can see several interesting instructions. Let's break down. When Aerith gets called, the x, y, and z arguments will be in the RDI, RSI, and RDX registers. The first line of C uses the LEAQ instruction to calculate X plus Y and put the result in a third register Z. This doesn't use the ADDQ instruction because we don't want to overwrite either of the input arguments because we still need them later. The next C instruction translates to an ADDQ instruction adding the RDX register with the RAX and writing it to the RAX. After this, the RAX register holds the value associated with variable T2 and T1 no longer exists anywhere. This is safe because T1 is not referenced anymore. It is a dead variable, so we don't need its value in a register. Now we need to calculate T3, but actually we don't need T3. We need X plus four. The compiler can recognize this and fold T3 into the later calculation for T5. The next line calculates T4. This uses a similar approach as the earlier example with the multiplication function. The first assembly instruction with LEAQ gets Y plus 2 times Y into RDX. The next line shifts this by 4, so multiplying by 16. 16 times the quantity y plus 2 times y is 48 times y. Now we generate the code for t5. This LEAQ adds x in RDI and t4 in RDX, then adds 4 and writes the result into RCX. The last arithmetic line multiplies t5 in RCX with t2 in RAX and writes the result into RAX. This is good because RAX is the register for return values. The function returns a 64-bit integer, so we don't care about whether or not the multiplication overflows. The last line is the return from the function. Since the return value is already in RAX and we didn't write to any callee saved registers, there's nothing else to do except return to the caller. Here's another example that calculates an absolute value without using a conditional statement. The first line of C code becomes two instructions. First, the value of the V argument gets copied into RDX. Then it gets right shifted arithmetic 63 bits, writing back into RDX. This has the effect of making RDX equal to all zeros or all ones, depending on the value of the sign bit of V. Here, the intermediate result needs to go into a register, and we don't want to overwrite V, which is in the argument register RDI, or the mask, because we still need it for the XOR. So the LEAQ operation is used to add RDI and RDX, and the result is put in the RAX register. Now the intermediate result in RAX is XORed with the mask in RDX, and the result is put in the RAX register because we want to return it. The function returns with the return value in RAX. 
So now you should have a basic understanding of arithmetic operations and how to use addition and subtraction, multiplication with truncation. Uh, you should also be able to use negation and bitwise operations such as and, or, XOR, and not, and shift operations. Next, we'll learn about control flow operations, including branches and loops.